Are you concerned that Social Security is not going to be around when you retire to help you offset your Medicare costs? Well, we are going to show you a way that you can fund your health care costs in retirement on a tax-free basis. One of the biggest concerns in survey after survey of employees is that they're worried about health care costs. Yeah, and who can blame them? It used to be that companies would provide health care for their employees after retirement. That's not the case anymore. Now it's generally in the hands of an individual. So if you're worried about that, we want to talk to you about indexed universal life insurance. Now, many of you may not know what Index Universal Life Insurance is, so we'll kind of walk through that to start with. This is a life insurance policy that uh, is very flexible. That's what Universal Life is. It's a flexible policy that you can change premiums and move them up and down as uh, time goes on versus whole life where typically you're paying the same premium the whole time. But the other component of an index universal life policy is that it allows you to choose an index. A lot of times it's the S&P 500, but there's some policies that have you know five, 10 different indexes you can choose from. And then depending on how that index performs, the insurance company is just using that index to determine how much they're going to credit to your account each year. Now, the advantage is that uh, most of these policies have a floor, meaning that if the market were to go down 30% or that index were to go down 30%, you're going to still stay at a, a level amount. Now, there's also a cap, though. So most of them have caps where if the market went up 30%, you may get 10 or 11%. Yeah. So you have a much smaller range of, of ups and downs that you have to deal with, which mm -hmm. makes it a fabulous tool for funding for healthcare costs because you don't see those huge drops when, uh, when markets correct. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons we like this for healthcare costs specifically is because there might be a cap on these plans. However, you know that these costs, these Medicare costs are gonna be there. You know that they're gonna continue to rise. It's actually a little bit easier than you might think to figure out how much you're gonna pay for Medicare in retirement. And so if you know that's gonna be there, you wanna be able to have some kind of guarantee that even in bad years, you know you're gonna be able to at least pay a certain amount out of a policy towards to go towards these healthcare costs. That's right, Shannon. And there are a few policies that actually have guaranteed income. So when you get to that age 65, or if that's when you're gonna turn on income, uh, they'll actually guarantee what that amount is gonna look like. And you can build in inflation. So mm -hmm. there's a couple of things that you can look at. But why we think these are great tools is that, again, you can over-contribute to them. So when we set these up, we make sure we don't really look so much for the death benefit. We just want to be able to minimize what the death benefit is and maximize how much money we're putting into it, mm -hmm. which will then allow us to take more money out when you're retired. So that's number one. The other thing is a lot of these policies have what we call critical chronic illness or long-term care riders that are built into them. So that that's if right. something happens to you while you're working, you have access to those dollars if you know if you had cancer, a heart attack, stroke, something like that, or an accident, you may be able to access the death benefit to help offset what your costs are while you're working. And then the same thing happens when you're retired is that you still have that death benefit that you have an access to for those events. And then of course, if something happened to you that you passed away, those that death remaining death benefit is gonna go to your to your heirs. That's right. So bottom line is it's a way to be able to pay for health care costs in retirement. But should something unexpected happen in the meantime, that policy is flexible enough that you can put it to use in other ways. That's right. Now, the income that you take, if it's structured properly, you can actually take income out of the policy in a tax free way. Mm -hmm. And so this is the other big key, is rather than having to utilize your 401k or uh, IRA or other taxable uh, accounts to pay for your health care costs, you can utilize the life insurance dollars that come out of the plan 
to fund your health care costs, which can save significant amounts of dollars over those taxable accounts. Right, and so this can be a useful strategy for really anybody, but it will have a bigger impact and will be more beneficial from a tax perspective for those higher income earners who know they're gonna be subject to higher taxes after they're retired. And don't forget that while you're working, you're saving on taxes on whatever kind of healthcare plan you're on. And then when you retire, uh, most people are not planning properly and having to use after-tax dollars to pay those premiums. This is a way that you don't have to do that. That's right. The other part of these plans is the money that you're going to be taking out when it comes out tax-free, not subject to modified adjusted gross income, which is the calculation used for means testing in Medicare. Yeah, so it could potentially you know, keep you from getting bumped up to that next bracket. That's right. Drops you in into a lower bracket, which then obviously uh, costs a lot less. And if you don't think that healthcare costs are a problem, if you look at the Fidelity study that comes out every year for a couple that's 65 today, they forecast about 295,000. But that's for a couple that's not in any of the means contested brackets. Yeah. So the numbers that we look at for a 65-year-old individual, closer to about half a million dollars if they're in the highest income bracket. Yeah. So it's a huge number. So this is a great way to be able to fund for those costs. And if you're an employer, you can really give your employees and your executives in this side of things a, a real benefit because mm -hmm. you can bonus them the money to pay for these this policy, to put money into the policy and they only have to pay the tax on it. Mm -hmm. So it's a great tool that they can be using outside of the company, but yet you're sponsoring it and providing the money to fund that uh, benefit. Yep, so you might wanna rethink comp structures and executive benefits and things like that if you're an employer because this can be really, really beneficial to employees. That's right. If you're interested in learning more about what healthcare costs might be for you and uh, a spouse when you're retired, go to the link in our uh, description tab and you'll see uh, we have a survey that you can take and that will send you a report that will show how healthcare costs will impact your Social Security. You can also reach out to us with any questions that, that come up or if you want additional help. And make sure you watch some of our other videos on healthcare and retirement, on what to expect, and also on long-term care. We're Shannon and Michael. We're always here to help. Again, contact us with any questions you might have. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you know when we do come out with new content. 